In this video, we'll be looking at screen configuration and how we connect different screens into ProPresenter. Thanks for watching. So once we open up ProPresenter, we're going to go up into screens and we're going to go to configure screens. Now in here, it gives us the option to plug in multiple outputs to our computer to allow ProPresenter to display different outputs on different screens, as well as different types of outputs. Now, when I talk about different types of outputs, there's two main types of outputs that I'm referring to. Number one is this audience output, and number two is this stage output. So the difference between the two of them is that the audience outputs are things that show the presentation. So they're things the audience is looking at. So it might be like our screen up here where our announcements are currently playing. That's an audience output. So you can see here it's called default. And just here, the current selected display is default as well. So it's showing what would be on this default audience display. A stage output is simply a stage display or a confidence monitor. So that's something that someone from the stage can see. So often that might be something like lyrics to the song for the worship leader. It might be notes for the preacher. It could include things like timers, uh, messages, and all sorts of other things that we'll look at in a different video. But they're the two types of outputs. Now we can have multiple of each type, and we can also show different things on different screens of the same type. So if we wanted to have an audience screen for in church, but we also wanted to have a lower third for live streaming, that would also be an audience screen, but we just set up multiple audience screens. So let's have a look at some of our options in here. The way this works is these little blue buttons, when we click them, they turn our monitors or our outputs on and off. And you'll notice when I change them, it also changes green and red up the top. So when we're not in configure screens, we can turn them on and off by clicking just above our preview window. So that's our on and off. So if our screens are plugged in, I can turn them off so they don't display and I'm just working in ProPresenter without affecting everything else. Now, other than that, here is my default. So I can rename things, and this took me a long time to discover, but I just double click up here to rename. So if I just call this screen one for now. And then if I wanted to add another screen, it's just the plus. Now in here, it'll show you the actual screen. So I only have one display plugged into my computer, which is the monitor we're working on. If I click identify, it'll actually show me which screen on that screen that I'm talking about. So sometimes your screens will have funny names and you won't know which screen is which and you might have three different screens in your church and you're trying to figure out which one it is, you can just click identify and it will show you which screen it is and the name of the screen like so. So what we can do then is once we've identified it, we can choose it. Now I can't choose this one because it's already selected in here, but you've got a couple options as well other than that. And NDI is usually used for things like lower thirds in live streaming or other things. But what it is, is it's like a connection through your network. So you can send the presentation through the network or through an ethernet cable. There are other ways as well. You can do it via Wi-Fi, but it's not as good most of the time, depending on your network. And you can send it to another computer or somewhere else over the network and it can pick it up. So for an example of this is at my church, when we live stream, I actually set an NDI stage display to another computer. So the preacher can actually see the stage display. And in that stage display on ProBrison, I actually have comments coming in live from the internet. Now that's pretty advanced, but we can look at that in another video. But it sends it from one computer to another computer over the network instead of having a really long HDMI cable or something similar. A placeholder is simply a screen and an output we can use when we don't have things plugged in or actual screen. So what I'm gonna create here is a placeholder. So I'm gonna choose my um, placeholder size. Now I'm gonna go with 1920 by 1080. And I'm just gonna call this placeholder so that I remember it's a placeholder. This is really useful if you're testing things and testing screens, or if you're working on a computer that doesn't have enough screens, but your other computer would have more, or if you just don't have your screens connected for some reason, just create a placeholder. And then once you have the screens connected, we can just come down and change them. So to edit your actual screens, down the bottom here is everything you need. So we currently got placeholder one going to placeholder, but we could change it to this one if we wanted. Now you'll notice if I click that, it changes straight over. 
and our output target is full. If I go to screen one and try to use this, it will tell me straight, straight away I've already assigned that particular screen on my computer screen here somewhere else and I can assign it to both or I can reassign it. It's a handy little feature. I'm just gonna cancel that for now. And we'll change this back to our placeholder. And, oh, now it's not happy, but that's okay. Let's just create a new one for now. That one's our placeholder. And let's go for the full screen there. All right, so what we can do is we can change the sizes and the aspect ratios if needed. The other handy feature here is screen color. So if you're using something like um, a green screen or if you're live streaming and something is keying out a background color or similar, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that is okay. We can just turn on a screen color and choose our color. And what it'll do is, is it will make that screen that color by default. So if you've got an empty background and just text, it'll make the background that color. So really helpful for things like green screens and keying out, but that option is there if needed. And let's just put it back to transparent. Um, so that's pretty much it here. You can change a few other things in here. But the other option here is your stage display. So let's set up a stage display and let's call it stage screen. I like that, that's fine. And our output's gonna be our placeholder, that's fine. Full, and we're at 1920 by 1080, good, good, good. Now the other handy buttons in here that you might find useful are screens and output. So you can identify everything in one click. So if I click this, you'll notice nothing happens. And often people get stuck at there. If I click this, nothing happens. Now the reason nothing happens is because these are turned off. So if I turn on stage and then click screens, nothing's gonna happen because my stage screen is my placeholder. But if I turn on this, you'll notice it'll go to my presentation. The reason it does that is my screen one is set as my computer monitor and my presentation is running. So it's sending the presentation to my computer monitor and it goes over the top. So let's get rid of that. And let's just turn this on. And now we have nothing, but you'll notice it's identifying the screen. So I've got the name of the screen and the dimensions and all of that information because I've got identify screens on and that is my screen. If I go outputs, it's telling me what is sending to that screen. So I've got LG full, it's telling me the GPU and a bit of other information there that's sometimes helpful to know as well. So that is what those buttons are for. Other than that, the only other thing that is sometimes helpful is this button up here. So what you can do is you can group screens together or allocate them under one type of screen. So for example, in your church, if you have two screens up the front, one on the left and one of the right, but they're always gonna show the same thing. You don't need to set up two different audience screens. You can set up one audience screen here and then choose to mirror them. And so I might, for now, just create a placeholder. And this could be placeholder two, and this could be placeholder three, just for this example. But this would be your left screen in church, and this would be your right screen in church. And you just need to allocate them once because they're always gonna show the same thing, as opposed to setting up two screens in here. You can do it if you had three or four screens always showing the same thing. You can set up multiple outputs and mirror them. The other things you can do is you can group screens together. Um, so if you had multiple TVs making up one big display, you can group them together and you can have multiple like this. So that would be four TVs making up one display. Or the other thing is an edge blend. So sometimes when they have a really big screen in some churches or really big um, like events and things, they do an edge blend. So this would be four different projectors shining onto one big screen. And the edges where the two projectors overlap is an edge blend. And so you can set that as well. So there's some pretty powerful stuff in here. But that there is a quick introduction to screens and showing you all the features in your screen configuration. If you do have any questions, don't forget to drop them down in the comments below. And of course, like and subscribe for more ProPresenter information coming soon. Thanks, guys.